let's talk about this because this is this to me is pretty surprising because it never usually happens like this so as most of you are aware danny matteson has been sentenced to 30 years to life in prison after rape conviction i can't remember the last time i heard of a high double digit sentence um in years for rape in general let alone 30 years of life. I can't remember the last time. So whatever he was accused of, he must have did that shit. And the evidence must have been very compelling for him to get 30 years to life. That is wild, right? I've never heard of that in my life. And it's interesting too, when you think about the stuff happened with Brian Callen. And I've always said before on a podcast, like he got accused of what he got accused of. He may be innocent and stuff, but I think sometimes the attitude these guys have or the you know the dismissive the dismissive nature which they kind of treat the allegations is really annoying and also the fact that they've been able to kind of pick their lives up you know from where it started from 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 before like nothing has happened they should be thankful because it could have gone really badly because Danny Matheson was a pretty well regarded actor in some way shape or form right he probably got way more credits than fucking Brian Callen and look what happened to him so the fact that Brian Callen and other people who have been accused of this sort of stuff were able to quote unquote get away with it you should be sort of thankful you should be happy that you didn't get convicted because it could go wrong um and it might just be a pure luck thing it may be circumstantial i don't know what it is but the fact that this guy got 30 years of life really shook me i was like wow man i was like okay fair enough bro um let's read the article courtesy of variety it says as follows danny matheson has been sentenced to 30 years in life in prison after being convicted of rape earlier this year matheson best known for his starring role on the hits on the hit fox sitcom that 70 show and netflix the ranch was facing a potential 30 years life in prison the actor who maintained his innocence was convicted of two of the three forcible rape charges this past May. Matheson was accused of raping three women in his Hollywood Hills home between 20, 2001 and 2003, which was during the time that he was on the That 70 Show. The jury convicted him of raping two women in 2003, but also could not reach a verdict on allegation from November 2001 involving a former girlfriend, though jurors voted in favour of a conviction. At the sentencing, the three women in the case told the judge that Matheson's crimes had ruined their lives and asked the judge to give Matheson life behind bars. Jane Doe 1 called the actor a true coward and a heartless monster. Jane Doe 2 called Matheson across the courtroom. I still have to contend with what you did to me that night. She spoke to him directly. Fuck. That takes a life worthy of that takes a life's worth of therapy to repair. Every time I think I'm okay, that rape comes back to me. Jane Doe 3 told the judge that she has been diagnosed with PTSD. Fucking hell, bro. They sound a lot like Crystalia victims as well, isn't it? Um, Matheson, who was dressed in a suit and had slick back hair with a full-on beard, did not speak at his sentencing. Many of Matheson's Hollywood family family members were in court on Thursday to support him. His wife and actor and model, Biju Phillips, was crying in the courtroom. His siblings, the Waking Dead actor Alana Matheson and Malcolm in the Middle star Christopher Matheson and actor Jordan Matheson were all seated in the courtroom together. Imagine putting your whole family through that when you know what you did. The wife is a funny one. If you if you Google the wife, it's a really dark story. If I'm not if I'm not um, mistaken, um, her sister. Her younger sister was raped by their dad, but this woman has a really close relationship with the dad. The sister confesses what happened to her to the other sister. The sister doesn't believe her and thinks she's trying to drive a wedge between her and the dad because they have a better relationship, um, which then leads all of them to falling out. And then, of course, she ends up getting with somebody that does rape. Do you know what I mean, look, imagine that bad luck. Your dad's a fucking pedo and a fucking, you know, horrible dude. And then you then go and marry someone that does that. I wonder if there's something to be said about people that suffer that sort of stuff, like finding those type of people. Like, because it's weird, isn't it? The coincidence that she would be in a family with, with that sort of madness and then end up with somebody who's a legit rapist. It's pretty wild. But I Googled her one time, I think after I saw the news on Twitter and so I was, I was curious to see like, how is this woman like standing next to this guy and holding his hand to court, which happens often, to be honest. It's one of the things that's really perplexed me during this time of watching all this stuff around Crystal Lear and Brian Kyle and stuff. It's always kind of confused me as to why women seem to be okay with being with guys that have those allegations for some reason i would have thought in my simple boy brain if a woman is with a guy who's been accused of touching kids or rape those would be immediate red flags to like end a relationship because you know you have no you have no um 
you have no certainty in that that person won't do that to you or also harm your own children and women obviously care about children and they care about being safe so you'd imagine those two things would be two things that women wouldn't stand for but there's a lot of men there's a lot of rapists whether they're convicted or not who have marriages who have families again and you know the women are f more than okay or don't want to pay attention to it or don't believe it it's always it always surprised me that you don't really see a lot of you know guys who have been accused of that stuff dying alone do you know what I mean they usually have second families maybe they lie I don't know I, I really don't know it's really interesting just thing to kind of analyze but obviously if you try to analyze it people think you're trying to victim blame or put the blame on women it's not really it's just more sort of fascination for me more so and why they're drawn to people like that because you'd think that'd be a red flag, isn't it? Really, it's like it's like finding out somebody steals, and they're your friend. You'd be a bit cautious about having stuff that you have around them, isn't it? Because they might steal. But I don't know. Who knows? It continues. Mister Matheson, you are not the victim here. Your actions twenty years ago took away another person's voice and choice. Your actions twenty years ago um, were criminal, and that is why you're here, says Judge Carleen Olmedo. Olmedo. As she sentenced Matheson on Thursday in the downtown Los Angeles courtroom, the judge sentenced Matheson to 15 years to life on each of the two charges, ordering Matheson to serve both sentences consecutively. The trial ended with a conviction in May 20, 2023, marked Matheson's second trial for the same charges. The first trial ended in November 2022 with a hung jury, but the judge opted to retry the case in front of a new set of jurors. The main difference being the two trials related to the allegations of drugging. In the first trial, the women testified that they felt weak or woozy. Wow, the same thing that we saw in that, um, in actually the Crystal Ear character he played in You. Doesn't he spike the girl's drink with like, I don't know, whatever he puts in it, GHB, ketamine, whatever. Um, they felt weak and woozy, had little memory after taking a drink prepared by Madison. But the prosecution did not outright say Matheson had drugged the women. In a red trial, prosecutors argued that Matheson had in fact drugged the women. Both trials shined a light on the Church of Scientology and a verdict marked a standing downfall for one of Scientology's most prominent celebrities. Matheson is a lifelong member and all three victims were Scientologists at the time of their assaults, but have since left the church. At the sentencing, Leah Rimini, a former Scientologist, and was seated in front row of the gallery to support the women. After Madison was sentenced, Rimini released a statement on social media, largely about Scientology. Sitting in the court today um, with the women who survived Danny Matheson's pre um, uh, predation was a, sur was a surreal experience. I'm relieved that this dangerous rapist will be off the streets and unable to violently assault and rape women with the help of Scientology, a multi-billion dollar criminal organization with taxes and status. Whoa, Leah Remini going for the next. Um, the three, Jane Doe's, both sentencing um, and in testimony that the church dissuaded them from reporting Matheson to the police. Prosecutors argued throughout the trial that Matheson had taken advantage of the position in the church to rape women without fear of repercussions and that the church forbade women from going to the police to report sexual assaults. Imagine having a church where they forbid you for reporting sexual assault. That would be a that would be the biggest red flag not to join that church, right? They'd be like, oh, by the way, before you join, um, just read rule number 10 there. Yeah, if in, if you do get raped, you're not allowed to report it. So, excuse me? If somebody touches your breast um, uninvited, you can't actually say anything. If somebody tries to kiss you, you can't say nothing. If somebody tries to finger you, you can't say nothing. If someone tries to stroke your bum, you can't say nothing. Is that okay? Okay, sign here. Or hold these, electri hold these electrified rods. <laughs> Let's go. Like what? Jane Doe 2 told the judge on Thursday that if she had been brainwashed member of Scientology at the time of her assault and alleged that the church had made um, co concerted efforts sorry, to cover up Matheson's behaviour since coming forward to allegations she claims that she has had many privacy invaded she's had her my privacy invaded almost on a daily basis by the court on Scientology so they probably did that thing where they follow you around with people and stuff right to kind of dissuade you from doing more stuff anyway long story short surprise he got 30 years um, it was really um kind of caught me out of the blue especially considering the amount of people that i've kind of covered on this sort of stream who do these sort of things who kind of effectively get away with it and have to sit down for a bit and miss out on their podcast money but then come back and nothing happened and then act entitled like they should have their entire career back when they obviously done something completely heinous that most people want to be associated with so it's kind of crazy to see somebody get actually convicted for something like this so you know most likely this guy is guilty bury him under the prison 30 years is probably not long enough and good fucking riddance isn't it good fucking riddance um so moving on from that one we have to talk about the statement from ashton kusher mila kunis because i'm intrigued to hear what you guys in the chat have to say about this because for me i can't really 
come at it at a unbiased position because I don't really have many friends, right? And I don't really, I also don't value friendship, but I don't see a scenario where I could ever be friends with somebody who has been convicted of, you know, rape or kitty diddling. I think I said it before on this podcast that the only thing that I would forgive is a heinous crime would be like murder because I could, you know, that could, there could be a reason for that. I don't know, the, somebody hit your mum somebody tried to abuse your partner or something and then you enacted revenge on them that could be forgivable i could still be your friend i'll put money in your books i'll visit you in prison it's all good but if you get convicted of diddling if you get convicted of rape we cannot be friends anymore i don't know you and i think that's perfectly fine line to draw but i guess some people have a different view on friendship and maybe this is what happened to ashton kusher and mila kunis maybe they see this danny matherson guy actually as a friend and they were trying their best to do everything to help their friend. And they obviously believe him. But for me, I just couldn't, I couldn't ever support somebody that, let alone get convicted of it. If you get, let alone being accused, but convicted. And then I'm trying to write letters in support of you so that you get a lesser sentence. That can't happen. Anyway, I say that to say this. This is for courtesy of the journalist called Megan Kuniff, who was at the center of all the stuff going on with Megan Thee Stallion and was kind of advocating mostly for Tory Lanez to go in jail, which is odd, but hey. Um, she was able to get a hold of the statements or testimonies that um, Ashton Kutcher and his wife Mila Kunis wrote in support of Danny Matheson when um, he was obviously about to get um, sentenced in court for what he did. So let's read some of them because for me, I cannot imagine ever doing this for anybody that gets convicted of fucking rape. It's absolutely insane. But let's kind of read it and we can continue. The letter from Ashton Kutcher. It says, Dear Honourable Judge Olmedo, my name is Ashton Kutcher and I'm an actor. You know what this kind of sounds like when it starts? It sounds like the letters that you write um, to go to college. What are they called again? Um, something, it's called like a statement. You, you write these letters to kind of like um, uh, convince the college that you're, you're, you should be a, a accepted in. It kind of starts like that, right? My name is Agassi Ozega and I, and I want to be a... You know, it kind of sounds like those really infantile things. <laughs> anyway, um... No, yeah, personal statement. That's it, Uchi. Personal statement. It sounds like a personal statement. Like, <laughs> my name is Ashton Kutcher, and I'm an actor, investor, philanthropist, and most importantly, a father. I met Danny Matheson when I was 20 years old in 1998. He instantly became a friend and, ded and dedicated co worker and a role model to me, and has remained such for 25 years. So, you've known he's been a rapist for 25 years. That's crazy. Um, as a friend, Danny has been nothing but positive influence on me. <laughs> He taught me how to rape. Um, he's an <laughs> get away with it. He's extraordinarily honest and in, uh, and an intentional human being. What is an intentional human being? I never heard of that phrase. You're an intentional human being. Don't we all have intentions? You're an intentional human being. One of my main problems is that I work too hard. Well, you know, I just have too many intentions. It's like what? anyway. Um, over twenty five year relationship. I don't ever recall him lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> he's never lied to me in 25 years all right mate um he's taught me about being direct confront yeah he's definitely direct isn't it he covers their mouth isn't it that's why he's direct um confronting issues in life and relationships head on and resolving them and moving forward danny is a person that is consistently there for you when you need him we've traveled around the world together um did they did they go to tijuana with bobby lee together maybe that's what he means we've traveled the world together along with bobby lee taking advantage of underage girls in third world countries oh sorry let me put that out there anyway continue um raised our daughters together and shared countless family moments not only is he a good friend to me i've witnessed him be a good friend to others and a kind brothers others would be lucky to have brother he's laying it on thick as a role model danny has consistently been an excellent one i attribute not falling into the typical hollywood life of drugs directly because of danny which is ir ironic because he used drugs to drug the girls allegedly huh. any time that we were to meet someone or to interact with someone who was on drugs or did drugs he made it clear that they wouldn't be a good person to be friends with and for me that is the implication that if I were to do drugs, he wouldn't want to be friends with me, which is something that I never would want to risk or jeopardize. So you don't want to risk not being his friends because you did a couple of lines, but you're okay being his friends when he's being convicted of being of rape. Cool. 
I'm grateful to him for the positive peer pressure. <laughs> I also set an extraordinary standard around how to treat other people. There was an incident where we were at a pizza parlor and a belligerent man entered who was berating his girlfriend. We had never met or seen this person before, but Danny was the first person to jump on that guy's back, strangle him until he turned blue and beat his face into the ground until it turned into a mashed potato. No, I'm just joking. Um, it was an incident that he didn't have to get involved in, but proactively chose to because of the way this man was behaving behaving that night he was always treated people with decency um equality and generosity after 9 9 11 no way this guy mentioned 9 11 9 11 <laughs> what was he a firefighter or something no ashton kutcher 9 11 what are you doing ashton he was treating people with decency after 9 11 Danny was a huge advocate to support the firefighters affected by the event, rallying his friends and co-workers to pitch in however they could. Danny had his daughter a year before I had mine. He set a standard of being hands-on dad and we have spent countless hours together with our kids and he is among a few people that I would trust al alone with my son and daughter. Oh my God, he's getting his innocent kids involved in this nonsense, man. Beast of a dad. He's also a dedicated and loyal husband and an unwavering commitment to his wife. Well, when you rape women, can you really say you're loyal? I guess you can because they technically didn't want it. So, you know, does it count? I don't know, but anyway. Um, we have spent hundreds of hours <laughs> working together. Danny takes his job seriously. He's kind, courteous, and hardworking. He treated people or everyone from the grips to the tap to the teamsters, um, to the actors, to the cafeterias, to the cafeteers, sorry, as equals. Aren't you meant to do that? Why is that seen as like a virtue? Oh, he treats everybody really nicely. Um, what are you meant to do? come in like a fucking tyrant and tell the, the caterers to make you a fucking cheese and ham sandwich asap you're meant to be nice to everybody you know um he showed up on time Ooh, all the time and was always pulled his weight um he did his job and he was nice to people cool um we also traveled around the world together promoting our work i can honestly say that no matter where we were who we were with i never saw my friend be anything other than a guy i have described okay cool so you saw the statement from ashton kutcher there's also a statement here from mila kunis we can quickly read and then we'll go into the video um the mila kunis um, uh, um statement here she's a baddie as well by the way she's a fucking piece as chris de stefano would say so it's, it's kind of crazy to hear her say this sort of stuff but it makes sense i'm writing this character letter on behalf of my dear friend danny matheson with whom i've had the privilege of fucking a few times <laughs> <laughs> of sharing a significant part of my life my name is Mila Kunis and I'm an actress and I believe it is essential to share the remarkable influence Danny has had on my life and the life of others I first met Danny during our time working together on that 70s show from the very very beginning I could sense he was an innate goodness and the genuine nature throughout our time together innate goodness you know that's a definitely LA language um innate goodness have you ever met somebody and felt like they had innate goodness innate goodness you don't know if he's hitting his wife at home, kicking his dog. Like, you have no idea. Innate goodness. Um, aren't you a celebrity? Anyway, whatever. Danny has proven to be an amazing friend, confidant, and above all, an outstanding older brother figure to me. His caring nature and ability to offer guidance have all been instrumental in the growth, and both personally and professionally. One of the most remarkable aspects of Danny's character is his unwavering commitment to discouraging the use of drugs. Why do they keep mentioning the drugs thing? Is that such a big deal in Hollywood? So has everybody got a baggie on them? Is that what they're basically trying to say? Everybody in Hollywood has a has a little pill bottle and a baggie of coke, of cat, of meth, of molly, and they always have some pills, I guess. That's what basically they're trying to say because they both mentioned the drugs thing. Oh my God, he doesn't do drugs, guys. Like they're all like wanking over this shit. It's like, how do you guys make your movies then? Are you all on drugs making movies? Like... <laughs> <laughs> how do you how do you how do you go through rehearsals and sit on set all day like I've, I've done a bit of extra work and it's fucking brutal i can't imagine what it's like actually being a star you sit around for fucking hours filming for like an hour uh, out of the fucking 10 hours that you're there it's horrendous man you have to be in fucking the gear all the time with your wig on and the makeup and the outfit it's awful um anyway 
It continues. He dedicated to avoiding the subs. So Danny's played a pivotal role in the guidance him away from destructive path. No, sorry, sorry. One of the most remarkable aspects of Danny's character is his unwavering commitment to discouraging use of drugs. His influence on me in this regard has been in- invaluable. In an industry where the pressures and the temptations of substance abuse can be unwell- overwhelming, so there's just coke everywhere. There's ket everywhere. There's pills everywhere. There's meth everywhere. There's crack everywhere. That's what basically he's trying to say. Danny played a pivotal role in guiding me away from it. His dedication to avoiding all the substances has inspired not only me, but other countless others in our circle. Danny's steadfastness in promoting a drug-free lifestyle has been a guiding light in my journey through the entertainment world and has helped me prioritize my well-being and focus on making responsible choices. His genuine concern for those around him and his commitment to leading, by example, make him an outstanding role model and a friend. Danny's role as a husband and father to his daughter has been nothing short of extraordinary. Witnessing his interaction with his daughter has been overwhelming, sorry, heartwarming and enlightening. He prioritizes his family, education, happiness above all else, demonstrating his unwavering commitment to being a loving and responsible parent. As a father, he leads an example, instilling in her value. So as a father, he leads by example, instilling her in her values that reflect integrity, compassion, and respect for others. Moreover, Danny has consistently displayed a profound sense of responsibility and care for those around him. He demonstrates a grace and empathy in situations, be it within the entertainment industry or within personal in his lives. He is um, steady support and understanding of the presence of the, the absence of warmth and humor and positive outlook on life have been driving force in shaping my character, the way that I approach my life challenges. He's unwavering commitment to being an exceptional older brother figure to me has had a transformative <laughs> impact on my life instilling in me the sense of self-belief and encouraging me to aim for greatness uh, but all um all the while maintaining a sense of humility hum- humility so the thing you have to keep in mind is that this was written in order to lessen his sentence he's already been found guilty most likely these guys were already in court they maybe had access to some of the information or the evidence presented but they had a really good grasp of what he's been accused of and the severity of it and they still wrote this letter at their level like i don't know why they needed that smoke on their name it's really odd but hey we continue 